So today I'm going to show you how to replace a leaking fuel valve, which is located here on a Predator generator. Uh, this is common for many other types of generators. I uh, just picked this off of Amazon, so there's a link in the description below if you want to get the same one. Basically this will go in here, and then I'll secure it up underneath here. Technically this takes a 22 millimeter wrench, but if all you have is a 7 8 uh, inch wrench, that will also work. They're very similar to each other. Um, so what we want to do first, realize that you're working with gasoline, so just get like a, an ABC fire extinguisher, basically you want to have something around just in case fuel ignites, uh, just be able to put it out. So I'll put that off to the side. Pretty much when you get these problems, uh, you have fuel in the tank, so we need to empty the tank first. So you have two options. You can either go through here and siphon it out of the gas tank itself. So because I don't actually have my siphon with me, I'm going to take the fuel line off while this is closed. I'm just going to place an uh, empty gas can underneath and capture the gas. If you have uh, fuel that is still pretty good, uh, but you're questioning it, you can always mix it with new fuel, and I use it in my cars and stuff to, to burn it off so that it doesn't go bad over time, because really, you don't want to let fuel sit around for a long period of time. You can stabilize it for about maybe a year or two, but that's about it. So first step, I have the fuel valve is closed. I'm going to just come up here and unsqueeze this, move it back. I'm going to take this off, just wiggle the hose back and forth. It's not a bad idea to replace the hose at this point, too. Uh, they do get brittle. I, I replaced mine with actual fuel line. Uh, the original Predator came with something that was not fiber reinforced. This one is fiber reinforced because I replaced it, uh, so this is a lot easier to work with. Um, the old ones that they come with, basically they're brittle, they break, and then they leak. So if you're doing this job, it's about time to replace that fuel line as well. And I have a, a video, uh, I'll put the link in the description for that as well. So now I've placed this underneath, I'm going to switch the fuel valve on. We should start seeing, yeah, I can see the fuel coming out. So we're going to let that fill up this tank. Also good to mention, you might want to put gloves on that uh, are fuel resistant. If you're less patient, basically all you do is loosen this up. This nut up, which is there, basically fuel will come down. If you try to drain it out of this little port, it's probably going to take an hour, or maybe two hours, to actually get everything out. If you do drop it like this, you're going to get a lot of fuel and it's harder to close off. So make sure whatever you're putting the gas in, you have enough capacity to actually receive. So I have a five gallon empty container that I started with, so should be able to hold the three and a half, four gallons that should be in the tank. And if you hope to drain this a little bit faster, if you open the top, basically that'll let air into the tank so then it doesn't create a vacuum, and then the fuel comes out quicker. So even with dropping this entire valve assembly, it's taken about 10 minutes to actually drain this tank. So, either if you want this to drain out faster, or if you wait till the end, this is basically how you unscrew it. You basically go this way, that unscrews this. I'm sure all the gas is out. It might have a little bit splashed down, so um, put something underneath to catch it. And you'll have this basically filter for the fuel. So if we take a look at this, basically it's just a little O-ring that sits in here and then that uh, gets screwed up in there. So now we have the old one, we have the new one, they're the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that fuel filter, put that in there. We're going to put the fuel filter in first, clean off any connections. All right. so the fuel filter goes in. Make sure the fuel line is going to go that way because that's where it needs to connect to the hose. We're going to snug this up. should be a 22 millimeter uh, wrench, but I only have a 7 8 so this is close enough. Just snug that up. Then what we're going to do is put the fuel line back on. Okay. And then you'll have some type of wire clip. 
just make sure it goes over where the hose barb fitting is uh, so it doesn't pop off. Okay, now that that's done, uh, we can add fuel back to the tank and run it and see how it runs. Make sure it doesn't leak. So I'm just going to open the fuel valve. You don't see any leaks. So for me, for critical components like this, if I ever have a power outage and I have a leak, I'm basically, I want to have a spare. So I got a three pack. Uh, basically to get three of them, it's almost, it's not even double the price of getting one. So I might as well get two spare, uh, keep one for a neighbor or somebody else that needs one. So there you have it. It's all fixed. Uh, we're ready for the next storm and power outage. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Good luck.